Nemo Radio is on the air. A, B, C. A, always B, B, C. Closing. Always be closing. Always be closing. Surely you can't be serious. I am serious. And don't call me Shirley. Put that coffee down. Coffee's for closers only. Come after me! I'm a man! I'm 40! Hey, it's John Nemo. Welcome back to another episode of Nemo Radio. I am... I'm so frustrated. I'm literally, I know you can't see me right now, but I'm pulling on what little hair I have left on my head. Because I am so frustrated with running into this time and time again as a prospect. And I want to flip the script for you and for me on this episode of Nemo Radio to really help you understand the number one reason why you fail to close the sale. I am running, this is crazy to me. So I'm running into this all the time as a prospect. And one of the great things you can do for your business is always, you know, intentionally or unintentionally have that awareness of putting yourself into the shoes of the other party. You know, I've, I've read so many books about that. I know Henry Ford had that, you know, he said the one simple secret to success is Put yourself in the other person's shoes. Get into their point of view. See what they want. And then flip that around, of course, and sell to them. And really understanding that right now as a prospect, I am actually out shopping for some different services, some different professional services for my business as I'm growing and expanding. And one of the things that has just stunned me and shocked me as a prospect is Going into calls where, again, someone else is trying to sell me their services for my business, so I want to interview you about giving you my money, I'm stunned at the lack of passion and emotion and professional courtship uh, on the side of the person selling to me. Like, literally floored. Like, sitting back just going, you must not want my money. You must be all good. You must be full. You must never need another client again because... It stunned me on multiple calls where I have gone in as a prospect, not that I'm coming in like, you know, arms crossed, you better dazzle me, but just more like, you know, I what is the song lyric? I want you to want me, right? <laughs> like, I need you to need me or whatever it is. Like, I want some passion. And this is the number one reason that people fail to close a sale. It's the reason three different vendors this week couldn't close a sale with me. Simply, they had no passion. They had no emotion. They had no enthusiasm or excitement toward me as a prospective customer. None of them were excited and passionate and saying, I can't wait to work with you. You're going to be perfect for us. I mean, listen, even if it's not true, even if you just have to get yourself worked up into a frenzy, Remember, your prospects want to be courted. They want you to practice professional courtship. People buy when they are emotional. And the last thing anyone wants to do as a prospect, and I felt this firsthand this week, was I don't want to spend money with someone who doesn't seem excited to work with me. I don't want to spend money with someone who makes me feel like I'm just doing them a favor or they're doing me a favor by being willing to work with me. And that's how I felt with some of these vendors offering these professional services. And, you know, it, it also none of them followed up. None of them, quote unquote, chased me. It, it really was an eye opener for me as a prospect. I was actually talking to someone inside my company about this. Like, is it just me or did you get this vibe? And the other person in my company was like, yeah, like they did not like, I want them to like come at us and court us and, and say how excited they are and tell us why we'd be great. And I want to feel some emotion and there's nothing there. And it really is interesting because especially in the service industry, that's really more than anything what closes the deal. And flipping the script around, whenever I'm selling and feeling connected to someone, I am like a starving dog chasing after a piece of sausage, right? Like, I am excited. I am passionate. I've got emotion and energy and enthusiasm in my voice on that call. I, and even in my follow-up emails and texts and everything else is I say things like, I can't wait to work with you. I'm so excited. I can't wait to get started. I have so many great ideas for how we can help you achieve, you know, X, Y, Z goals that you said you wanted to achieve with our company. That is really honestly what closes so many sales. 
far more than the services offered, the pricing, the contracts, any of that. Because honestly, these different vendors I looked at this week, the pricing was not the issue. Uh, the price ranges were fine, right? The services were not really the issue. To, to, to a decent degree, they answered my questions about could they meet my needs with the services. It was much more just that cave person emotional part of me that was like, I don't feel a connection. I don't feel a connection. I don't feel an emotional engagement. I don't feel a vibe. Uh, you know, I don't feel any enthusiasm, electricity, juice. And that's why I'm not going to go with these people. I'm not going to give them money. And so I want you and I to really draw from these experiences and remember that people only buy when they're emotional. And it is your job you know, period, end of story until the end of time to make people feel emotional, to get them emotional on a call. And the way that you do that is very simple. You have genuine passion. You have genuine enthusiasm. You tell the other person you're excited to work with them. Um, because again, when you can get the prospect emotional and getting excited about what's going to happen when they engage with you and use your services and how you're going to help them and how you can't wait to get started and how you're going to hit the ground running and all these different things, they feel courted. They feel excited. They feel wanted. They feel like, wow, you really do like me and want to work with me. And that's when they're going to buy. They're emotional. They're excited, right? We're buying not just to solve our problem, but we're buying to feel good. I don't care what anyone tells you. That's also part of the process. We're buying because it feels good. Yes, we want to be cold and calculating and analytical and check the boxes. But the reality is, you know this, if you do sales for a living, people buy based on emotion. They justify the purchase later on based on logic and facts. So do not ever discount that. Not only on your phone calls, Zoom calls, you know, whatever it is, the interaction live with someone, bringing in passion, enthusiasm, tone, all those different things, but also your follow-up correspondence. Your emails should say things like, can't wait to get started, so excited to work with you, you know, bursting into the scenes with ideas of how we're going to help you with blank, right, whatever it is related to the project. People respond to that. I, I can't believe as a prospect that people aren't doing that to me. I I'm just like, well, you just don't really seem like you could care less, right? And it's stunning to me. It's stunning to me. And, and it's a big reason, I think, why a lot of people struggle with sales is, you know, maybe you're not bringing in that passion, that confidence, that enthusiasm, because you're not in a good place. This is one of the only things I can think of um, rather than ranting and telling everyone to get passionate, like a practical thing to do is really to understand your mindset really matters. When you go into a sales call, it really, really, really matters. So what I want to do is actually share with you some very practical tips and training. This is actually from a live Noon with Nemo session I did a while back. It's called How to Rock Your Sales Calls. But what follows is the actual audio of a online training I did to show you how to get yourself in a good state of mind, how to get yourself fired up, how to get yourself passionate so that you can convey that to the prospect on the sale and close the deal. Now, um, I'm going to link to this in the show notes so you can actually watch the presentation with slides and text and video if you want. And then there's a great course that goes with this that's called Million Dollar Mindset, How to Rock Your Sales Calls. And I've got it for just $47 right now. I probably shouldn't say the price because maybe it'll change and go up in the future. But as of this second, this recording, um, that's what the price is for the, the full online course. Um, and I want to give you a hint of what it is on this podcast episode. Again, going through the live presentation, and then you'll hear and see ways at the end of this podcast that you can actually get the full online course. But regardless of whether or not you take a deep dive with me here in the next few minutes about how to rock your sales calls, how to really you know, develop the mindset, the passion, the confidence uh, for your next opportunity, please, please, please understand this is critical. This is a critical component to being successful when it comes to selling, bringing in emotion and passion. That's the number one reason sales fail. So don't let that happen on your next call. Listen in for the next few minutes as I walk through some of my favorite tips with that. And if you want to take the next step and grab the full online course, How to Rock Your Sales Calls, get the Million Dollar Mindset. There'll be links here in the show notes on your podcast app as well to everything. All right, let's get after it.
So what we're going to cover today is what I call a million dollar mindset, really developing the type of mindset that enables you to just rock your sales calls. I know that's such a struggle for so many people is really being successful on the phone or online, whatever it is, face to face, when that happens again, closing people, you know, finishing a sale and so much of what goes into a success full sales transaction is involved around your mindset. So I'm really going to talk about this in depth today. And here is 100% a fact, like cannot be disputed. Here it is. You cannot outperform your self-image. And that's why I always start with this when I'm coaching or training or teaching people how to be effective at sales is there's just no way around these facts. And the first one is what I just shared with you. Of course, you can't outperform your self-image. The second one is income improvement follows self-improvement. This is a lesson that I had to learn and that I'll share with you today. Uh, listen, this is what works. Getting what I call a million dollar mindset is how you close more deals. It's how you make sales. It's how you find success. It's how you achieve your goals. Everything is around thought and mindset. And so what we're going to talk about today is really what I've discovered are kind of the key steps to developing this million dollar mindset. And, and there's really just three. There's three core things I want to share with you today, three key steps that will help you rock your sales calls, hit your goals, achieve whatever it is you want to achieve with sales, income, life, you name it. So the first step, I want to dive in right away. And you can see, here's a photo of one of my boys, Alex, uh, achieving one of his goals, a backflip. Now, the first step in this to having a million dollar mindset is you've got to have what we call an emotional goal. And I love this quote from Maxwell Maltz, Psycho Cybernetics is a book you've heard me talk about before. If you know me, a book on mindset and self-image. And here's what he says, you know, your brain is going to seek and accomplish goals that you consciously determine. But here's the key thing. Your brain only works on images that you feed it. And I showed you this image of Alex doing the backflip because here's the key tip. We think in terms of images and pictures. This is the first thing that a lot of people get wrong when they're working on their mindset, having a positive attitude, having good thoughts, you know, having a good mental game, clearing out mental trash. So many people don't realize the way that we think is in images, in little mini movies or videos or photos. And that's why on the back end, visualization and imagination work so well. So I'll take you over to Alex and his accomplishment. His whole goal, he's been obsessed with landing a backflip on the trampoline. What's so funny is I didn't have to teach him how to do this. What he did was he went and he watched YouTube videos. Again, think about this. He watched YouTube videos of other kids doing backflips. He watched and watched and watched, and then he imagined himself, he visualized himself pulling off the backflip. And when I talked to him about it, and he was down this morning doing more of them, and I said, what was the real breakthrough for you? How did you accomplish this? And again, the kid, I think he turns, he turns 13 in August. He said, well, it's just more mental, Dad. You just are scared to do it. But once you see yourself doing it, it's a lot easier. So I watch kids on YouTube who are just like me doing it, and I figure I can do it too, and I just see myself do it. There you go, right? Mental imagery, visualizing. There's a great analogy to really drive it home from psycho cybernetics about how powerful creating an emotional goal and then seeing it and visualizing it can be to achieve success. And there's this study that they did that he talks about in psycho cybernetics where they took three groups of people. Group number one, practice shooting free throws, like you can see here, for 10 minutes every day. Physically went to a gym got a basketball and practiced free throws for 10 minutes physically. Group two did nothing. They didn't practice at all. They were just kind of the test group. Group three practiced only in their mind. They were told, visualize yourself 10 minutes a day, sit in a quiet place, comfortable place. Just watch yourself, play a movie in your mind, see yourself making free throws. Don't physically do any practice. Don't go to the gym. Just sit back and in your mind, see yourself having success. If you see yourself missing a free throw, see the next one going in, see yourself correcting your stroke, whatever it is. And the result of the study was the people that visualized that actually didn't do any physical activity versus the people that actually practiced physically in the gym, they had the same level of improvement. 
they literally had the same level of improvement. And that's what's so exciting about understanding the power of visualizing yourself hitting a goal. It's, it's all in your head. It's all a head game. It's all in your mind, seeing it happen and doing it as an image. So really, when you set what I call these emotional goals, and I'm going to tie this into your sales calls in a second, when you set your goal, it needs to be a vision or an image. It needs to be something you can see. It's not a number in your bank account per se. If it's about growing your wealth and having more money, that's not a strong enough goal. Make it emotional. What will that wealth or money bring? What will it mean? What will it buy? Or see yourself logging in, see a little movie of you logging into your bank account online and seeing the numbers be higher than they ever have been. Or see yourself filling out your monthly revenue spreadsheet and see the numbers and feel what that makes you feel like. But the key is if you can tie this into an emotional feeling. So when I somebody asked us at the beginning, how's your swimming pool? When I started out to do this, when I first really understood the power of having this mindset and really wanting to accomplish my goals with sales with everything else, I read this book, Cyber Cybernetics, hard to say. But anyway, I had this vision of, man, what would it be like to build a swimming pool in my backyard? which is how cool would that be? There, there's absolutely no way I ever thought that's possible prior to this. Uh, it was just a pie in the sky kind of daydream and vision, but I had this mental image. And so what I did was start visualizing a swimming pool. Now, this was the reality. This is what our backyard looked like when I started. This is the typical swimming pool that, you know, the Nemos had was this blow up inflatable pool, right? With some hose water. And here's the better part. At the beginning, when I started visualizing this, I was over five figures in debt, okay? I had just come off the worst month in the history of my business. I was struggling. I had, there was nothing in my, quote, reality to justify this type of expense, to justify this type of dream. There just wasn't. I, I was five figures in debt. My business was struggling, but I knew, and thank God I had a good coach at the time that said, it's really in your head. It's really mindset. You've got to really work on your mindset, John. That's what's holding you back. It's not circumstances. It's not the economy. It's not the world. It's your mindset. And so despite reality, despite what you know, I looked out and saw in my backyard every day, which was this, I started doing this. I started visualizing this scene, and it was like a movie scene. I could hear the water coming off the slide. I could you know, feel the warm air and feel the sunshine on my face. I could see myself going in off the diving board. I could hear my kids splashing and laughing. I could feel the cool water on my feet when I dangled them into the pool. I could see myself working outside in this beautifully landscaped backyard patio. And this is the key to being successful with creating an emotional goal is you spend 10 to 15 minutes every day. You sit and find a quiet comfortable place and you just exercise your imagination you see it you feel it and you experience it you literally just set a goal whether it's my son wanting to learn how to do a backflip whether you want to learn how to make free throws at basketball or that you want to build make so many sales that you build a pool in your backyard right so again this was the reality as you know we moved we still had a ton of debt this was our new backyard i mean right nothing special you can see we had a swing set back there a little mini trampoline that was the reality but i didn't stop i didn't stop visualizing and here's what was interesting because as i kept at this visualizing this scene every day for 10 and 15 minutes sitting quietly in my chair in the beginning of the day, feeling it like, oh man, I would feel so good when I would get done with this little daydream. I would just feel energetic and pumped up and excited. And I, this would be so amazing if this happened. But what I did was day after day after day, I was feeding these thoughts and images into my brain. And all of a sudden, I started acting differently. Without consciously trying to be different on sales calls, without consciously you know, saying, I'm going to do this differently today. I just started acting differently. I just started closing calls. I started doing things I never did before. Like you're looking at a shot of me, you know, wearing my Zuba pants, you know, it's, which is funny sitting in front of my computer. Here's an example prior to the visualizing before I started doing this, when I was kind of living in this world, right? This is reality. I can't, you know, get any better than this. If I got a lead coming in on email on my computer, uh, somebody saying, yeah, I'm interested, blah, blah, blah. I wouldn't do anything other than maybe email them back and hope they call me. 
But what I started doing differently after I started visualizing and just having this daydream in my mind day after day, one of the ways I started acting differently without thinking about it was all of a sudden I would just call people because everyone has a phone number and their email signature. If a lead came in, I would call them on the spot. Hey, I just got your email. I thought it'd be easier to talk to you quickly instead of writing back a long email. So excited you want to hear about blank. Let me tell you about it. Let Tell me about your story. And then all of a sudden I would close them on the spot. And I just, I had this confidence and I was acting differently. And it was because your brain, and this is a deeper dive into psycho cybernetics, it will do whatever you tell it. Like you'll feed it the thoughts and it will go accomplish that. So if you tell your brain, this is what I want my reality to be, kind of this is the level I'm going to be, that's what your brain will go out and do. But if you tell your brain through these goals and emotional visualizations, this is what I want to achieve, and I know that in order to do that, I've got to you know, increase revenue, et cetera, that's what happened. Here's the cold, hard reality. You can see here, August, I think this was 2017 or 2018. I can't remember. It was a few years ago. But this was the worst month in the history of my business. Now, for some people, $19,000 in one month is phenomenal. That's great. You would kill for that being self-employed like I am. And okay, that's, you know, other people go, man, I make $19,000 a minute. So <laughs> the numbers aren't important. What I want you to see is the growth. See the revenue growth here. Can you tell when I started visualizing? I started in late September, okay? Late September, I was really at another place where August was really low. September was at around, again, like 17, 18 grand. I started doing this visualizing. I started seeing the swimming pool. Look what happened in October. I tripled. I tripled revenue, okay? Like, and here's the best part. Here's the best part. Uh, I got this now in my backyard. This, this is literally the emotional goal that I achieved by growing my revenue, doing things differently, and the best part is I'm not unique and there's no reason you cannot do the exact same thing. Here's a great quote from David Schwartz, The Magic of Thinking Big. He says, successful people are not supermen or superwomen. Success does not require super intellect. There's nothing mystical or magical about success. And most importantly, it's not based on luck. Let, hear that loud and clear. It's not based on luck. Successful people, I love this quote, are just ordinary folks, just like you, just like me. I am very ordinary. Trust me. <laughs> you can ask my wife. I'm very ordinary. Successful people are just ordinary folks who have developed belief in themselves and what they do. Key thing, they've developed belief. When you have belief, then you start taking different actions. All of you listening and watching right now, there is no reason you can't have this exact same scenario. I'm sorry. There just isn't. Like, let me go back. I started this five figures in debt. I started this worst month ever. I started this feeling depressed and down and not having any real reality to prove to me that I could do it. I started all this at the bottom. Okay. I'm not superhuman. I'm not super intellectual. I didn't have any advantages. Uh, my parents didn't leave me millions of dollars. I started from scratch. Okay. I started in debt, you know, um, but I did the work. And it was easy. It's just visualizing. It's just imagining. Your brain is so powerful that it will take you to this place. It works. And what I love is anyone can do it. There's nothing stopping you right now from doing this. Hear that loud and clear. It's not the economy. It's not coronavirus. It's nothing. It's just your thoughts. Honestly, even if your business is 100% dependent on coronavirus, you can pivot. Jill is on the call right now. She runs the paint bar in Boston. Super successful physical business where everyone had to come in and do paint and sip events. They showed up at her studio, paid money, everyone in the room together, painting and drinking wine, having fun. Well, coronavirus wiped that out. Jill pivoted. She changed her mindset, started doing it via Zoom, shipping out the materials, getting all the logistics done, finding people uh, that wanted that service to connect their team via Zoom and do the event. We'll ship you the wine. We'll ship you the paint supplies. We'll ship you the canvas. Her business blew up. She's like doing better now than she ever has. So again, she didn't sit around and mope about coronavirus. She just pivoted, changed her thoughts. Successful people are ordinary people who have a belief. Jill believes she's going to be successful. She's going to figure it out. And that's where mindset comes in. So now I want you to share in the comments your emotional goal. Put it in the comments right now for me. Tell me what it is. Is it putting a swimming pool in your backyard? Is it flying first class 
for a trip to Europe for a month? Is it putting your kids in private school? Is it doing that dream vacation to the Bahamas or wherever? What is it? Give me your emotional goal in the comments right now. And in fact, I'm going to exit out of my screen here and I'm going to go back into the comments and I want to hear um, what people, uh, Leonard is saying does the pool double as an ice skating rink? That's good, Lenny. You should see it in the winter. And Ben, yes, this, Ben says, how many days can you actually use your pool in Minnesota? You, not many, right? But it doesn't matter. It's an emotional goal that helped me improve my business, improve my sales. Okay, so John's emotional goal is a Tesla S100. So John, if you started visualizing every single day, seeing yourself in that Tesla, feeling the leather seats, you know, pushing the button and the electric motor hums, feeling your hands on the steering wheel, pulling out of the garage, you know, the feeling uh, when you take it on the highway and are just flying along. What would that feel like, John? What would that feel like? And if you do that for 10 minutes every day, see yourself in the Tesla, pick out the color, pick out the interior, feel yourself in the car, turn on the radio, listen to your favorite song, make it as real as possible. That's your brain basically practicing shooting free throws for you. And eventually you will start acting differently, closing more sales, finding a way to get the Tesla. That's how, what I'm talking about, right? So we've got other ones here. Let's, let's read through a few of these. Um, and here I'll, uh, I'll come back to the screen share in a sec, but we've got, we've got art saying being able to travel more while building a retirement fund. Yeah, Sandy's got a great one. Spending all of January in Florida, the Caribbean. Oh, amen, right? Amen. Now, Sandy, visualize that for 10 minutes every day. Visualize yourself flying first class. Visualize yourself landing on the ground. Visualize yourself on the beach. Feel the sand between your toes. Feel the ocean breeze. Make it real. And watch what happens when you emerge after that 10 minutes of daydreaming, how fired up you are, how good you feel. And then watch how you start behaving differently and closing more deals. Art has got a good one. Cindy, taking your family to Europe for two weeks, right? Getting my Cessna back out of the hangar, Gary. There you go. Feeling the power of flight. How cool is that? Travel and work from the road. Jackie getting that lake house. The key with these emotional goals. And yes, I'm Scott one romance. Finding that woman, he actually covers that. Like you can find those things, right? Buying pieces of land, Andrea says, love it. Tim, a GMC Denali 3500, yes. Like set a goal for yourself. Set an emotional goal, but make it real. What would it actually feel like today to be able to do that, okay? That's the idea with these goals. As a vet escaping Florida in the summer, amen to that. That is a good one. All right, so you're getting the idea. You're sharing uh, an emotional goal. And when you do that, that's when everything changes. All you have to do is start spending 10 minutes every morning living that dream, feeling it, experiencing it, and believing it. It'll work. Now, step two, the second step we want to talk about with really rocking your sales calls, having this million-dollar mindset is being confident. That's the number one way to close more sales is to be confident. And I'll say this more later, but confidence is contagious. It's contagious in a presentation. It's contagious in coaching. It's contagious in sales. It's contagious in dating. It's contagious in everything. It's confidence. So how do you get that? How do you feel confident? So here's a photo of me playing t-ball, right, like circa age five. And I love this example because here's what Maxwell Maltz is telling you about how to get a feeling of confidence. He says, in order to direct yourself. Now, notice he's talking about you are a goal-seeking creature. Human beings are designed to achieve goals. So you're directing yourself toward a goal of success instead of failure. All you need is one experience, just one thing that made you feel good about yourself. Just one. Remembering and then using that modest accomplishment. It doesn't have to be climbing Mount Everest. It can be hitting a home run in T-ball, okay? I'm serious. Remembering and using that modest accomplishment will be instrumental in improving your self-image and creating confidence. Now, the key here is it doesn't have to be some huge success. Maltz talks about on Psycho-Cybernetics, it can be as simple as remembering when you learned how to tie your shoes, okay? It's not important what the event was or how big of a deal it was or did it happen in front of a million people. It's What's important is you're reminding yourself through you know, recalling and reliving these images of times when you came through, times when you were successful, times when you made it happen. Because when you do that, 
you can then create that feeling of success that carries into the sales calls. So I love this tip and really want to pause on this. It doesn't have to be some big thing. When I was visualizing the swimming pool, I had never made a sale of more than maybe $1,000 or $2,000 ever, ever, okay? After I started visualizing, visualizing the pool, I didn't have any big sales success to speak of, right? I've been pretty bad at sales. I now can make five-figure sales, okay? Same John, same ordinary person, just the belief and the confidence that came out of some of these smaller experiences. So here's a practical thing you can do. Another 10 or 15 minutes every morning. Play what you what I call your greatest hits tape, your highlight reel from your life. I know a lot of you watching have that. Like Catherine Bishop in North Carolina is an accountant uh, for construction companies. One of she's an incredible person. She has all these great success stories from her life. She was a champion level kickboxer in college, right? Honored in the University of North Carolina. Uh, mathematics department hall of fame alongside nba all-star and hall of famer james worthy so like if Catherine's having a bad day or or if Catherine, if you're not feeling like you have what it takes to close a deal pull out the kickboxing highlights right like relive when you won that title what did that feel like see yourself kicking the crap out of whoever that person was the unlucky opponent <laughs> and that's the feeling of confidence you can carry into the call here's a picture of me in little league right i remember my first at bat ever in uh, Roseville Little League, this is age seven, I hit a home run. Now it was coach pitch, underhanded, whatever. But seven-year-old me hit a home run. By the way, I never hit another home run that season, <laughs> okay? But I'm not focusing on all the fails. I'm focusing on that modest accomplishment when I hit a home run and I still remember running around the bases. Uh, I relive this for 10 minutes every morning. I can see and hear the parents cheering from their lawn chairs at the Little League field. I feel the oversized batting helmet bouncing around on my head. I see myself running and touching first base, second base, third base. I see the kids running and waving me home because the ball is still in the outfield. And I remember tears of joy coming down my cheeks. I was so happy. When I relive that memory and when I relive other memories from my life, either athletically or the time I won an award in college, what it felt like to be called up in front of the whole school and honored, whatever the achievement is, that does something to you. It changes your um, thought patterns. It changes your body chemistry. You start acting confident and successful. And so I want you to share some. And I already, I already outed Catherine Bishop's, you know, the kickboxing one. Why, I want you to put into the comments right now one or two of your greatest hits, something that you're proud of, something that you accomplished in your life. Uh, I have one client of mine, Vivica Hess, who, you know, wanted to become a ski instructor. And she had this bully male um, teacher training their team that told her she wasn't good enough. And one day she summed up the courage to just say, basically bleep you, Gary. She did the training run and aced it and became a certified ski instructor and earned this crusty old guy's respect. Like that's a greatest hit for Vivica before she goes on a sales call is to remember, remember when you came through, remember when you showed that you have what it takes to achieve something. So I want you to put in the comments right now, one of your greatest hits and it doesn't have to be big. Yeah. So rock has got four state titles in high school. There you go. Like there's plenty of ammo there. Right. Um, uh, you know, recording the song butterfly kisses for your daughter's wedding. Right. So the key thing here is not to compare resumes and say, well, I climbed Mount Everest and I, you know, spoke in front of 10,000 people. The key is something that made you feel successful, proud, excited, could be tying your shoe, could be hitting a home run in Little League, could be winning the state title in high school, could be Jackie giving that TEDx talk, right? Graduating from an Ivy League college after your mom said we can't afford to go. So this is a perfect example, Jackie, like you now have proven to yourself that you have what it takes to be successful. So before you go into a sales call, imagine if you spent 10 minutes remembering what it felt like to walk across the stage, graduating from an Ivy League school, relive the emotions, relive the excitement and the joy, see the, you know, the academic people handing you the diploma, Feel that or feel yourself back on the TED Talk, see the audience laughing, reacting, loving it, right? Phyllis, relive the dancing days. Relive that for 10 minutes before you get on the phone with a prospect. 
right? Marceline's talking about helping a client achieve their goal. Dive deeper, Marceline. Relive a specific story. Jill, the client, Sally, the client, what did you help them do? How did it make you feel? Relive that, right? So John can say my first promotion in the fire service. Dad's got one climbing up to Camp Muir on Mount Rainier, right? Leonard winning a domestic violence case for a client that was a sure loser and making it a win. Remember that. Relive it. How did that make you feel? And what's really interesting, and Dan, writing and publishing a book, that's amazing. Remember what it felt like to hear when you won the award. Crossing the finish line after the swim for alligator. Holy cow. Like these, you guys are amazing. You guys are amazing. Right? So there are all these wins in your life, large and small. And the reason these impact your sales calls is for this very simple reason. If there's one simple secret to success, it is this Malt says call up, capture, remember, evoke the feeling of success. Because when you feel successful, when you feel self-confident, you will act successfully. When the feeling is strong, you can literally do no wrong. So what do you think is a good idea for you to do before your next sales call, before you talk to a prospect, before you get, you know, get in the car to go talk to someone, pick up the phone? Do 10 minutes of your greatest hits. You will evoke and recapture and recall the feelings of success. You'll start to feel incredible. You literally will change your body chemistry. You'll change your thought patterns. You'll change your body language. You'll change the tone of your voice. You will step into that call feeling like a million bucks and feeling like this person's lucky to even be on the phone with me. I can't wait to crush this call. You have no idea how good I feel. Because what happens is on your sales calls, your confidence is contagious. Your confidence becomes contagious with the prospect. Your self-confidence, your assuredness becomes contagious in sales. What the confidence will do on these calls when you're feeling that way is the prospect will believe in you. They will believe that you can deliver what you're promising to deliver because you're so confident. You're so excited. You're so exuberant. You'll also make the prospect believe in himself or herself. If you're selling a service to a person saying, you don't realize what a good business you have and how much I can help you improve it. You've got a great thing going. I don't think you realize that. Like you get the prospect excited too. When the prospect gets emotional, when they get excited, when they react and you know catch the you know contagiousness of your confidence, then they buy. People buy when they're emotional. Having learned this, having sold... $47 products up to five figure service products. People buy for the exact same reason. It's never the price. Okay. It's always because it feels good. It's always because they're excited. It's always because they're confident and can't wait to attack and solve this problem or relieve this pain or achieve this benefit. Whether I'm doing a, you know, $47 sale or a $47,000 sale, it's the same thing. People want to feel something in order to buy. They will give you all these other objections, but that's what it is. They want to feel good and be excited and feel like you're the person to make it happen. How are they going to feel like you're the right person to help them? Because you're confident, you're self-assured, your tone, your posture, your body language, all of that is just, you know, emanating from you. And they're going, well, this person is so confident. Like they're sure they can do this for me. I'm going to, I believe in you. You believe in me. Let's do this. And what the best part about it is, None of these uh, examples of your greatest hits have to be related to the sale you want to close, right? So we've got Rock had the four state championships in high school. He's probably not selling something to a high school kid for training. Maybe he is, but it doesn't matter because the feeling you had from being successful at that event in high school is the same feeling you're going to use to close the next sale. So I cannot overemphasize enough how important step two is to feel confident. And best of all, how easy it is just pulling up a modest thought, reminder, time, successful, putting yourself in that good state. So step three, the third step I want to hit on that is so important is what we call remembering the torpedo. <laughs> I love this analogy from Psycho Cybernetics. He talks about when you think about a guided missile or a submarine firing a torpedo, it accomplishes its goal by going forward, making errors, making mistakes, and then continually correcting course. By a series of zigzags, the torpedo literally gropes its way toward the goal. 
that's that's so important to understand with sales calls and mindset is you have to ab- embrace and expect to make mistakes. And here's another great quote from Maltz. He says, do not be afraid of making mistakes or of temporary failures. By the way, every failure is temporary unless you give up. Then it's a permanent failure. Thomas Edison, I think the quote attributed to him, he failed 10,000 times to invent the light bulb, someone said. And then Edison replied, no, I just found 10,000 ways that didn't work. I didn't fail because eventually I figured it out. But it took me 10,000 tries of failing, learning, and adjusting. If you don't give up, you will have success. Like that's the big thing. And so Maltz talks about this. He says, you achieve your goal by negative feedback, by messing up, by failing, or by, and then by going forward, making the mistake and correcting course. So I literally have this quote on my desk, remember the torpedo. So that when I botch something, when I mess up a sales call, when I have a client yell at me, when I, you know, screw up a a product or a service I was supposed to deliver, I'm always remembering, oh, yeah, there's no pressure to be perfect. The only way I'm going to get better is by making this mistake, learning from it, adjusting and moving on. And the key thing here is not dwelling on the mistakes, not beating yourself up, simply using them as data, correcting it and then forgetting about it. Notice when I talked about playing your greatest hits, there's no section in here that says play your greatest failures. There's no time spent in your mindset work, reliving times you messed up and failed. Now, most of us do that on autopilot. A lot of us, if we're not careful, we will relive our failures and beat ourselves up. Well, guess what happens? We will then look for ways to achieve more failures because that's the mindset we've put ourselves in. Instead, you've got to actively play your greatest hits and you know create success, or you'll just move toward failure. And that's the thing about it is really understanding the torpedo action. Give yourself permission to mess up because that's the only way you're going to get better. You know, Michael Jordan, he used the basketball example earlier. He got cut from his high school team his freshman year and his sophomore year. The greatest basketball player in the history of the sport couldn't even make his high school team his first two years. So, like, he just got better. He kept zigzagging and groping toward his goal till he achieved it. That's the big thing is learning this, that success consists, I love this quote from Winston Churchill, success consists of going from failure to failure without loss of enthusiasm. You don't dwell on it. You don't beat yourself up. If you lose a big sale, if you blow it, you can have a little pity party for five minutes or 10 minutes and blame coronavirus, the economy, yourself, your parents, whatever, but then move on. Forget about it. Learn whatever lesson is in there to learn. And then move forward. Keep going forward. Don't stay stuck fixating on the failure. This is what I love too. Because so many people will say to me, well, it's easier for you to close deals. You know you know what you're doing and blah, 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 blah. And I haven't done this before. And da, 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 Here's the thing. This is the quote I live by with selling people. It's, it isn't so much what you know when you start that matters when you're offering the product or service. It's what you learn and put to use after you open your doors that counts most. Nobody has it all figured out in the beginning, right? When you first put together a product or a service for someone, or you try to sell, you know, a five figure package, or whatever, I didn't have it all figured out, but I was confident that I could get the person, the result they wanted. What I focused on was when I was doing done for you, LinkedIn lead generation. And for the first time ever charging people five figures, I, you know, people would say, well, have you ever worked with someone in my industry? And I'd be like, no, but I'll, I'll figure it out. I will get you results. It's not, it's not rocket science to me because you want to sell a service to human beings. Uh, I don't have experience in your industry. I can learn your industry and I'll interview you and learn what makes your audience tick, but then we'll sell them. It's the same thing. It's, that's the thing is I didn't stop. I didn't say, well, since I haven't technically worked in your industry, I, I am not confident that I can help you. I said, I'll figure it out. And I did, right? And that's the thing with how to view failure is when you're doing sales, You remember, even if the client says, well, I'm not sure because you haven't had my exact scenario, you just remember the torpedo and go, well, I just won't give up. Like, I I will figure it out. The the difference with me and a different vendor is I won't quit until we have an outcome. Like, I just view this like a torpedo. We're going to test. We're going to tweak. We're going to adjust. If it's not working, we're going to try something else. We're going to learn and we're going to make it work. And the thing about sales is at the end of the day, everything is human to human. 
There, there, there is no other form of selling. So you have to sell the other person one-to-one human relationship, whatever the product or services they're selling, they're selling it to people. Robots don't buy products. Pets don't buy dog food, right? <laughs> like Rosie doesn't get to pick her dog food. I buy it. You have to sell me. So even if you've never sold dog food before, you can figure it out. Remember how powerful your brain is. And remember, if you want to achieve the outcome enough, your brain will figure it out. That's the other big thing. So when we talk about this, remember, you don't have to have it all figured out. That's really just a way to sabotage yourself. Well, I'm not ready yet. I don't, I haven't done enough education. I haven't read enough. I haven't learned enough. I haven't been through this. You'll figure it out. Just sell it, sell them on the outcome and then figure out how to get it. Here's the other thing I've learned with sales calls is people just want the outcome. They don't care what method or tool you use or who executes it. People come to me for done for you LinkedIn for one reason. I want leads. I want qualified sales leads that I can close. If it's LinkedIn, great. If it's Facebook, fine, whatever it is, right? So, so that's the thing you have to remember. I love this quote too. Oh my gosh, your brain will figure it out. You just have to give your brain the emotional goal and focus on the outcome, not fixate on how will it work or how will it happen. When I was daydreaming about a swimming pool, I had no idea how I was going to make that happen. I did not have the money. I The highest price product I had at the time was $2,000. You know how many $2,000 online courses you'd have to sell to build a pool? I didn't have a plan. I just focused on an outcome and an emotional goal. Eventually, down the line, I developed five-figure done-for-you services, and I developed other high-ticket products and programs that felt like they came out of nowhere, but that was my brain figuring out the how-to. I didn't have it at the time. I didn't know. I just knew I wanted a pool, and I needed to make a lot more money, and eventually, the how-to showed up, and that's the power of mindset and visualizing. Focus on the emotional goal. Focus on the end result that you want. Your brain will do the work behind the scenes and will present you with how to do it. So here's a final thought before we run out of time, working on your mindset, and I'm stealing this from Zig Ziglar talking about, you know, success and mindset, but working on your mindset is a lot like taking a bath. If you don't do it every day, you're going to start to smell. (laughs) This is the number one trap that people will fall into is not doing this consistently. We have a, there's a concept in the book, Psycho Cybernetics, he talks about called autopilot. Most of us, uh, 95 or more percent of people have a negative autopilot, meaning if you just wake up and jump into your day and don't consciously do some visualizing and focusing on goals, you'll run on autopilot, which is negative. You'll lead yourself toward failure. You tell yourself subconsciously, I don't have what it takes. Look around. It's never change. So you've got to work on your mindset every day. If you proactively spend that time, and again, there's no strain or stress or effort to visualizing. It's just doing it. When you do it every day, the results come. This is another thing I love is Malt says you carry around an internal feeling that will look for external pegs to hang itself on. This is what I always tell people when they blame, you know, circumstances, coronavirus, the economy, the president, um, family history, myself and my own limitations. Depending on what your internal feeling is, you'll find external events to prove it true. You will, this is another great quote that Maltz has. He says, there are elements and quote unquote facts presence in the world in our personal lives at all times that can either justify a pessimistic and grumpy outlook or an optimistic and happy outlook, depending on your choice. You get to choose. Like you get to choose if that call that failed was either a great learning experience and now the next time you know what to do differently to close it, or you can look at it as the verdict on you, you're a failure, case closed, you'll never accomplish it. You get to choose. The facts are the facts. How you feel about them is up to you. There's a one-armed guy in the National Football League. Shaquem Griffin, I think is his name. There's a guy literally with one arm playing professional football in the most difficult league on planet Earth. So that guy obviously did not look at the fact that he had one arm as a reason to say, I can't make it to the league. He found a way to make it to the NFL. And he's a really good player. He was an All-American, I think, in college. So, like, there's no reason you can't accomplish your goals. It's how you look at the circumstances and how you feel. I love this quote from my coach, business coach, Sean Morgan. He says, you can't be victorious when you're being a victim. 
So again, this is where the thoughts and the mindset come in. If you're running on negative autopilot, dwelling on failures, you're not going to have success because again, your brain is not emotional. It's impersonal. It's just like a computer. You're giving it commands and it will go accomplish what you're telling it. If you're telling it, make me a victim today, you'll find all kinds of opportunities to play the victim. You'll find people being mean to you and you'll focus on that. You'll find people saying no and you'll focus on that. Poor old me. Or you can be victorious and find opportunities and keep moving. Great quote, great quote to wrap up with. No one can decide what your thoughts should be but yourself. Nobody. You get to decide. Your family doesn't get to decide. Your parents, your preacher, your president, nobody gets to decide what your thoughts are and what your limitations are except you. End of the day, there's only one you. There's only one brain that is yours. You get to decide. So here's the three keys as we wrap this up to really understanding how to rock your sales calls. Number one that we talked about, creating that emotional goal, that swimming pool story, whatever it is, you know, creating that dream and making it emotional and visualizing it for 10 minutes every day. Step two, you've got to be confident on sales calls. The way to create confidence and the feeling of confidence and acting confident is to evoke and recall times when you've come through, times when you've been successful. They can be modest, tying your shoe. They can be something like climbing Mount Everest. doesn't matter. As long as you evoke that feeling, if you feel confident and feel successful, you will act that way on sales calls. That will lead to more sales. And finally, the third key is remembering the torpedo. Just viewing failure as necessary and a way to correct your course, move forward, zigzag toward the goal, but never staying stuck in it, never dwelling on it, forgetting it as soon as you've taken the lesson and move forward. That's the key. So now the next step that I want everyone to take is I've put an online course together called Million Dollar Mindset. So let me share that with you um, because I think you're going to love this. I think you're going to find it amazing. So I'm back on camera. Okay, so uh, let me put the link in here and launch the offer because you're going to love it. It's only, and I made this for you. It's a series of video lessons and audio lessons. It's only 47 bucks, okay? So I'm really putting in all my best stuff on mindset. If you liked what you saw today, it, get the course here. Okay, so let me put that in put the direct link in, and then I will answer questions. I'll show you what's in the course as well. Um, get the course here. And Million Dollar Mindset is a course I put together of audio lessons and video lessons. It's all my best tips on what we've been talking about today. And I'll actually open a new window for everyone as well. And then let me show you on my screen uh, what's inside the course. So you should see my screen again. This is the checkout page that you're getting redirected to. And then at the bottom, you can see it's just $47. And what we have inside here is a series of audio and video training. So you're going to learn kind of I have a, an hour long deep dive into mindset, really deep dive with slides and everything you can download on how to really implement and apply this, the lessons that we're talking about, even deeper than what we talked about. We're going to cover with some different audio lessons, topics like the number one obstacle to massive success, the invisible line between failure and success, an unconventional approach to really being successful with sales and authority and branding. I'm going to share some secrets of top performers that went from average to awesome. You're going to learn this is a little tough love section, but the painful truth about why you're not more successful. And I alluded to that today. And then I'm also going to be sharing free copies of my book, Fired Up, the audio book and the ebook that you can download for free inside the course. And the idea with this program with Million Dollar Mindset and How to Rock Your Sales Calls, this is literally having me in your head every day which I know could be a scary thought or a good one, but audio lessons and videos that you can listen to before you go on to a call, that you can remind yourself, that you can say, oh yeah, what do I need to focus on? What's holding me back today? What are these key kind of mindset lessons I need to go back through and really understand not just the concepts, but also the creative ways that you can achieve your goals with mindset. So I would love for you to sign up for this. I think it's it's really a key part of being successful, not just with sales, but with your life. You know what I mean? And achieving goals. So let me do this. Um, there is no, oh, so good questions. I got some questions coming in. Um, 
Thomas says, is there a time commitment to complete? No, you get lifetime access to the course. It never expires. It's on demand. So you can watch it whenever you want. You can download all the audio, take it with you in the car, phone, whatever. Again, it's audio lessons, video lessons, some written copy as well. Almost all of it, if not all of it, is downloadable. Carry it with you. And again, the idea is to really help you understand how to unlock what's holding you back with mindset. And once you figure out your mindset, as I showed you today, income improvement follows that self-improvement because you cannot outperform your self-image. So there is nothing more important than this. And I'm making it very affordable. It's just $47. I'll do a 30-day money-back guarantee. So you have 30 days to go through it all. If you don't like it for any reason, I'll give you a full refund. There's no hassle. There's no drama. There's no homework involved. I want this to be successful. I want to remove any barriers that you have to getting your hands on it. Because honestly, once I understood this stuff, and there's a reason I keep a copy of this book on my desk, uh, you will be unstoppable. Royce is in. All right. Tell me for getting in, by the way. I want to celebrate with you. Royce, got it. All right. Can't wait, Royce. All right, Royce, tell me uh, again what your emotional goal is. I'm going to hold you accountable right here in front of the whole world on the webinar. Royce, what's going to be your emotional goal that you're going to daydream about every day? Tell us. Everybody else who's signing up, tell me in the comments too. I want to celebrate with you. So I see some people coming in. Um, this is awesome. People are getting in. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So tell me, right? Tell me what you got going. Uh, there's no time limit. It's all about implementing. It's all about, and the beautiful thing about mindset and you know what I learned in this book and what I've put into the course is it's not hard work in the sense of can you sit in a chair and imagine? Can you sit in a chair and daydream? So if you can do that, you can do the mindset work. It's that easy. Now, what's really exciting about it is you will start acting differently. You will find ways to accomplish your goals. For whatever reason, this thing up here, your brain, is like a computer. It will find a way to help you get to those goals, but you don't have to consciously strain and strive to figure it out. That's what's crazy about this. All right, so, and I got a live chat coming in, so I'm going to answer that. Um, but yeah, if you have questions, I have a live chat. Somebody said they're going to buy it. Awesome. Can't wait. All right, let me know if you're getting in, and let me know, living the barefoot rider lifestyle, Royce. That's a good one, the traveling rider. So make that a real detailed dream, a real detailed vision. One of the key things that I talk about in the mindset course is our brains don't know the difference between a real experience and one that we vividly imagine. So that's the reason in that basketball example where they're shooting the free throws, they, you know, they were practicing in their brain and it's a simple enough physical activity. It's not like lifting a thousand pound weight. It's just flipping a ball that you can practice it mentally. Golf is the same way. You visualize yourself hitting the ball straight. You don't have to worry about your form as you're going back. It just corrects itself. And that's, that's the power of this is understanding you have this powerful mechanism up here, but once you understand how to use it and how simple it is, that's what I always struggle with was I was trying to like almost like take screwdrivers and just pressurize success. And it really doesn't work that way. It works when you kind of just put yourself in that place mentally to be successful. And then it just comes and the how to shows up, which is, I didn't believe that. I'll tell you right now, I would visualize the swimming pool and, and how it's all going to happen, you know, the money and everything. But I had no clue. I, I was like, well, do I have to sell like a thousand online courses a day or what's going to happen? Like, I don't have a high ticket product. I don't have an idea for one. It just showed up. And one day I was just like, I think somebody suggested it or I read something. I was like, oh, well, I could put together a done for you package and I could charge five figures and I could figure out how to make the ROI work because I could ask the client, you know, what's one new sale worth. And if the client says 25 grand, well, then maybe I could charge 25 grand. And if I get you one sale and do all this work, you know, like you just figure it out. You just figure it out. It's, it's incredible. But that's not to say that you don't have to educate yourself and, and work, right? But if you're aiming at a goal you really want to achieve, the work is easy. You know what I mean? Because you want it. Like, I remember times. Um, all right. Sounds good. Okay. I just got to tell somebody this. Okay. Yeah, there's a risk free. So if you're on the fence, you're not sure, just sign up for it. You can, you got 30 days to test it out. So the thing about it that was so intriguing to me when I really started working on the mindset was, 
again, you just take different actions. You behave differently. You're like, I would, oh, I know what I was going to say, the hard work for the goal. If I had a day where I didn't feel like taking an action to call and try to close a sale, a couple of times I would just blurt out to myself, I really want that pool. <laughs> and I would call the person and inevitably close the deal. Like, because my brain was reminding me, you're telling me you want this goal. I'm trying to help you get it. You have to remember that goal. And then before I would do a call, if I wasn't feeling it that day, or just regardless, I would do that success visualization. So anyway, all that said, great stuff. I could go on and on about mindset stuff for days. But um, I see a lot of people signing up, which is fantastic. Thank you, everybody that's getting in. Um, if you have any questions, let's do this, because I know we're running up against the clock. Um, hop over to the actual checkout page, and I'll put that in. Um, okay. Okay, sounds good. I'm just live chatting somebody back. Okay, so what we can do, um, hop over to the checkout page. There's a one-on-one -on -one chat feature there. And then um, you can basically ask me any questions you want there. Okay, so Karen says, once you sign up for Million Dollar Mindset, uh, do you access it in LinkedIn Riches? Uh, no, Karen, it'll be a different login. It's on Thinkific is the program. You'll get all the... Um, login email to you so it'll all come in linkedin riches is on a different site i know i have like seven online courses now <laughs> so these new ones i'm putting on thinkific so if you've bought other courses you know um email marketing machine oh well, that one i think is on a different site too I, I don't even know john is in all right donnie said lenny says great stuff all right have a tire replaced good luck with that buddy um yeah what other questions if you have any other questions um let's do this let's do it one-on-one -on -one in the live chat I will hit the um, redirect tab for anybody that hasn't signed up yet. And this is all content I haven't shared elsewhere. This is mindset content that I haven't put out before and compiled all in one place. So I think you're going to really find it helpful because it's really kind of the core key lessons distilled into a digestible format. You can download it. You can listen to it. And honestly, th there's not a better investment you can make than working on your mindset and that will impact sales. And sales is the lever, as you know, that moves your business. And that's the number one thing that I talk to all the time with prospects and clients is I don't know how to do good sales. I struggle with sales. I'm not confident. I don't feel secure. This fixes all that. Yes, there's tactical parts of sales. Yes, there's certain questions to ask. Yes, there's certain science behind good sales. And I show you all that in different courses. But this is the stuff. This is the rocket fuel. You do this, you get the mindset figured out, the rest of it's easy. <laughs> Honestly, it just is. Um, all right, so I got another live chat coming in. Let me grab that. Um, somebody said, how long before I received the sign-in? You should get it within a few minutes. If you don't see the sign-in after you sign up, um, let me know, and I'll, I'll check. Um, all right, and Sandy says, is this based on the Psycho Cybernetics book? Yes, parts of it are based on psycho cybernetics, but I bring in a bunch of different books. So I bring in The Magic of Thinking Big, Psycho Cybernetics, Think and Grow Rich, Tony Robbins, like all of it. I've kind of taken all my favorite elements of it and kind of put it into my own stew and then I deliver it. So it's definitely based on some of those kind of, you know, best known people. Earl Nightingale, The Strangest Secret. That's another one that's really good that I've implemented. Uh, there's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> so good question. Uh, all right. Karen says, thank you. Great webinar. Thank you, Karen. Excited to have you joining us too. Um, Rock says, in the morning mindset, is it okay to replay the same thing every day or to come up with new material? Oh, great question. Play the same tape over and over and over and over and over again. Same thing again and again and again and again. And the reason is it becomes now just automatic. So if you do that every day, if you're replaying rock like yourself, winning one of those state titles, what it felt like, what sport was it in, by the way? What sport did you want to say title in? I'm just curious. But if you replay that day after day after day, it makes it easier. It kind of grooves a pathway in your brain just to activate confidence, success, feeling great, self-esteem, all, it's just easier than trying to kind of ingrain a new memory or a new movie. It's just repetition too. If you shoot a hundred free throws every day, your body just learns and corrects and gets better. So if you keep doing the same visualization every day of the same outcome, then you're going to have success. So yeah, keep it the same. The only thing that I change up is the goals. Cause once I got the pool, I was like, well, now what, what's my new goal? Right. Cause all of a sudden I felt like 
okay, now I'm kind of a letdown. I'm not just going to go on autopilot. So I just developed new goals. One was, okay, I want to get us out of here in January because I live in Minnesota. So it was like, I'm going to start daydreaming about a Bahamas vacation and paying for that, you know, and having a week there and getting the best room and start, you know, starting to see myself on the beach and leaving Minnesota where it's negative 20 and landing in the Bahamas where it's 75, you know, and so that was a new goal. And then we accomplished that in January. So that's like, well, what now for February? So just keep setting new goals. Like when you get the Tesla S100, now set another one. What's a new one? Is it taking your whole family somewhere to Europe for a month? Is it, is it buying a new house? Is it paying your house mortgage down to zero? Is it building a pool? Yeah. So yeah, two in football, two in basketball. That's awesome, man. Love it, love it, love it. This is great stuff. Okay, so let's do this. Um, if you have any additional questions, hop over to the live sales page. Um, you can see that here. I'll end the live broadcast for now. And then any additional questions, just click on the live chat button. Uh, let me show you what that looks like too, if you're still in the webinar. Uh, if you haven't signed up already, here in the bottom, you can see it'll say contact John Nemo in the bottom, either the bottom corner or the middle. If you just click on that, then you can start typing a message in and I can respond to you. And yes, it's really me. So there you go. Thank you everybody so much for being on. This was awesome. I hope you're inspired. I hope you're fired up. I hope you're getting into the million dollar mindset mode. Love it, love it, love it. Love working with you guys. I'm so excited for you to get into the training, implement this and hear what happens. Thank you everybody. Be good. Have a good weekend. Uh, sign up for the course. I promise you, you're going to love it. 30 day risk free, no hassle. If you don't love it, you can get a full refund. It's only 47 bucks too, which is amazing. So there you go. All right. Talk to you all soon. Um, and yes, Sandy, you're right. We all need to be reminded about a positive mindset repeatedly. That's why I use that Zig Ziglar quote. It's like bathing. If you don't do it every day, you smell your thoughts start to stink again. Um, so again, implement it every day. All right. Love it. Thank you guys so much for being on. 